So the next thing I want to cover or talk about is how do you know when a pullback is deep enough, okay? Sometimes it appears when the pullback is too deep, it may go up and then start moving sideways. Well, there's nothing you can do about that happening because it happens, right? I just well, I already demonetized. Shit happens, right? <laughs> so let's go through a couple examples of that. And he also mentioned VZ. So a couple of thoughts. 99.9% .9 of the time, I just eyeball it, okay? And then you got to ask yourself, was the trend significant coming into the pullback, okay? And was there a sufficient enough players that were likely knocked out, okay? And possibly some shorts attracted. There's a lot of mumble jumbo when it comes to technical analysis out there. My technical analysis is two things, performance-based trading, okay? I wanna be in strong markets. And if we're in a raging bull market like we were a few days ago in crypto, I wanna be buying the strongest pairs. For the most part, I do play I play pullbacks, except in IPOs, I do some breakout stuff there. And if we get in a rip roar in bull market someday, I'll, I'll probably do relative strength which is performance-based technical analysis, once again, just buying stuff that's moving in the new highs. A little bit more of a breakout characteristic there. But you want to make sure you got a really good trend, make sure the performance is there, and then you want to make sure enough players have been knocked out. So that's the psychological part of the technical analysis. That's the second part. You're reading the mind of the market, okay, reading the emotions of the market, and at the same time embracing your own, because as I preach, from a neurological standpoint, you cannot eliminate your emotions i got into a heated debate with someone about that the other night <laughs> a friend of mine's wife and my wife and him the husband actually went off to the bar they got sick of sick of me arguing because if i'm right and i know i'm right then i'm not gonna give up and then i saw another meme that could be me too it's like if i realize i'm wrong then i might go an extra 10 or 15 minutes just to aggravate you <laughs> I scored incredibly low in agreeableness, and which which is a horrible trait to have if you're going to be a trader. The middle edge of trading is that uh, oh, I always swear I'm going to remember his name. Larry Larry Williamson wrote a book along with Larry Williams on trading. Anyway, it's a good book. I'll I'll put the link up in post, and I have it on my uh, website under book three, and I'll put that link up too. Uh, you can quantify it. I, I'm not a huge fan of making things mechanical, although I do certain things every now and then. Uh, years ago, I did program literally thousands of trading systems, and that actually turned me into a, to a discretionary trader. But I did come up with a few things so I could show people something that's a little bit more mechanical, so they can learn the the process. And if you're new to trading, Maybe just trade these Landry Light pullbacks and nothing else. And I'd be willing to bet you'd have a hard time finding any in this particular market, any that are worthwhile at least, or any period. But you can quantify it. You could use Landry Light pullbacks to the 30 EMA. Now, be warned, I showed a couple of crypto pairs, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago, where I showed the Landry Light, but it didn't quite get down to the 30, but it, it had gone so far up it was such a deep retracement that it was plenty deep enough. And we'll look at plenty deep enough here in one second. But the 30 might be too far away if you're waiting for it to pull all the way back to the 30 on something that's in a rip-roaring trend. And of course, make sure it's a good setup to begin with. I'm gonna pick on somebody who showed me Verizon or whatever, forget who showed me, I'm gonna pick on them a little bit. And, and that's part of the better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John approach to trading is, you might be concerned about the pullback being deep enough, but also work on your stock selection to make sure that you're picking the best stocks to begin with. By the way, I think I'm pretty sure the stock selection course becomes free after you stay a member, a gold member for so long or a service member because you get the gold free. Just an FYI on that. Not a shameless plug, just to let you know, just if you're serious about sticking with it, then all the courses eventually become free because if you're serious, I'm going to give you the courses too. So again, make sure it's a good setup. You want to have decent HV, and I'm going to walk you through one of these. Strong trend, nowhere, nowhere head supply, and ideally a persisting trend, accelerating trend, and all the other qualifiers that I talk about for the trend, such as a gap in the direction of the trend, small gap, not something crazy, and not a whole lot of trend qualifiers against.
Okay, so once you have identified a solid trend, make sure that the knockout move is meaningful. By that, I'm talking about the TKO. And I wanted to show you, I just pulled this old slide from Trading Full Circle. I pulled a lot of my slides from that. So this is a nice persistent stock. And it technically, it's a TKO because it's two bar low. I think that, that was original rules. But you want it to be on a pretty wide range bar. So you want it to look something like that. So this is kind of an easy way to kind of show you is a pullback deep enough. Now we'll go through a few more examples here, but the litmus test would be, was it big enough to attract some shorts? Remember with the TKO pattern, like all my stuff, it has a psychological backing. The psychological backing is number one, some shorts have been attracted. Number two, or actually should be first and foremost. So let's make that number one. Number one, some longs have gotten knocked out and they might want to get back in. Number two, some shorts have likely been attracted to the market. And basically, we're looking to take advantage of the predicament of these traders. The longs get back in and the shorts get forced out. Now, the good thing is shorts are pretty damn obstinate, okay? And they don't believe that a market deserves its valuation. So what they'll do is they'll, because they're egotistical, as a general statement, they're going to hang on to that stock if it goes straight back up. And they can't believe it deserves that valuation or whatever. They might even short more. And that's kind of like along the lines of something I never could understand is trends exist as long as people fight them. Well, that makes sense. As long as shorts are trying to fight a trend, they're being forced to cover at much higher levels. And that's how sometimes these things go parabolic, which ironically, I learned a few years later that after publishing this pattern, that there, there, there's actually a shorting the parabolic strategy, which I think is a bad idea. But that's a story for another day. So where recent longs stopped out, and if you were a longer term holder of this, let's say you got into a swing trade and then it turned into a longer term position, would you likely have been knocked out of the position? Or even if you were swing trading it, would you likely have gotten knocked out? It doesn't happen often, but there's been a few times where I've recommended a stock, we've taken the initial profit target out, we've gone into trend following mode, it's knocked us out, okay? It knocks us out on a Wednesday. And then on a Wednesday night, I show the same exact setup again. Not often, there's only a few times that I can remember this happening, but sometimes it's like nice little uptrend, bam, knockout move, we get in, nice little uptrend, bam, knockout move, we get knocked out. So long of things for all the fish, better than the poking the eye type of trade. And then we get right back in the next day. Now, again, this is where I was getting, if you were long, would you have been stopped out? That's just one thing to ask yourself. Okay, so here's a recent setup. This is the one I showed earlier that, that did hit the initial profit target. It was an IPO, and it wasn't a huge, huge move, but it was a substantial move higher. It's about 38%, and I'm eyeballing, it looks more like 50%, but I, I, for some reason, I got 38%. That's probably about right. And then you can see it pull back fairly deeply, 2.6 points about a 13.5% retracement. Now, I'm not I'm not a big fan of, in fact, I don't even use, I don't use Fibonacci, but sometimes if you get a pure retracement like this because you, you got an established low and established high, then yeah, some of those deep pullbacks might probably be a 386 or something like that. I, I, I hate to say that. I don't think there's anything magical about Fibonacci. And my biggest beef is a lot of people who, who use it will put a thousand lines on a chart and then eventually it'll hit one of the lines and hit another one of the lines and they're like, you see, it all came true. It's like, well, what about the other thousand lines in your chart? But I digress. I don't want to get in trouble either. <laughs> but as you can see, fairly deep pullback based on the magnitude of the trend. So MBLY was another one of these setups. And uh, just full disclosure, I did not take this one. It, it had a gap and a fast move on the open. It came back in. But I am looking to get long somewhere around this high, maybe right below the high, should it uh, should it trigger again. But you can see in this case, it was an IPO, and it had a pretty good run. That other stock, by the way, was an energy stock, so a little bit more lenient as far as wanting a serious trend or a really, really, really serious trend or something like that. But it was still a decent trend nonetheless. Here you have 23 points and change or 93% move. So that's pretty substantial. And you can see that 
the more recent move was 19 points or 67 percent so if you look at that, the bigger picture trend it's like a hundred percent almost and if you look at it, the shorter trend here it's about 70 percent round number so those are two substantial substantial trends depending on how you look at it john says i did not take mbly but we'll take a second entry good good you know and i don't want i don't want anyone who took the trade mechanically i don't want to rub salt in anyone's wounds but sometimes a little discretion can can help now the downside is let's say tomorrow this thing gaps open 10 points i mean it could happen right then I'm not in and John's not in and whoever else uses discretion is not in. And and you just have to you have to make decisions and live with them. And and that's something that I actually wrote about earlier today. And, and you guys are gonna see all this stuff eventually. But it's like if you're not happy with the way your decisions are turning out, then make better decisions, okay? Become a better stock picker, which takes a little time, but it it can be done. It can be taught and it can be caught. So bring up the charts on Facebook, let me noodle with them, give me permission to give you some tough love, and I'm not the grand poobah, and a lot of other people will chime in who've been doing it just as long as I have, in some cases longer, and are familiar with my methodology of trend following, let them chime in too. And just, you know, it's like little by little, it's like piece by piece. It's like somebody showed a chart that had a, a shit ton of overhead supply. So I drew a big flat, fat, triangle and highlighted the overhead supply and he's like oh yeah yeah wow okay and i could tell that he was thinking like oh, i shouldn't have showed that but it's like you know what next time i bet he's gonna look for overhead supply okay and then next time i'm gonna show him there's a big fat gap way back there he's like okay no overhead supply no big fat gaps got it then he'll show me the next one it's not persisting it's chopping around the net net price move is not there and so on and so forth he's gonna say okay now I think I have it. It's persisting, it's accelerating, it trades cleanly, no overhead supply, no gaps. So you can see piece by piece, you begin to kind of catch it, I guess, as, so to speak, as my client says, as opposed to, it was a caught, not taught. Anyway, so let's take a look at this. So you can see pretty deep pullback there. 10.83 points, 22.5%. So that's a pretty, Pretty serious pullback. The chances are pretty good that some somebody got knocked out of this stock. Now, again, like I said, sometimes you could quantify things, especially, especially if you're new to trading, by all means. And you could see here, if you look at the 30-day EMA and look at the Landry light, you could see it got out to about 20 and then it imploded because why? Because it came down here and touched the moving average. Okay. So if you're new order trading, you could probably scan for these. I would re I'd still recommend you look at a, a, boat a boatload of stocks every day, but you could scan for these just in case you miss something. I'd rather use a scan as a backstop as opposed to my analysis in and of itself. I look at like I said, a couple thousand stocks every night. And that gives me a good feel for what's going on in the market. That's going to kind of answer one of the questions in a few minutes. But I'd recommend you look at a lot. But by all means, you could do some scans with this. And like I showed in the Facebook group today, they just added all my scans to the plugin. So if you want to scan for proper order or Landry Light or something like that, you could certainly do it with the, the scanner on stock charts. And if you watch the last Trading Simplified show on my website, you'll see that. So here's a Landry Light pullback. You see nice Landry Light, about 20 bars or so, pulls back to the EMA. So that's another way to determine if they're deep enough. Now, by the way, if you are trading Landry Light pullbacks, always look at the net-net price change because sometimes, and this isn't a perfect example, but you can see right here, this stock traded sideways for quite a while and you've got quite a bit of Landry Light when that happens. So make sure you look at the net net price change and make sure your trend coming into the to the setup is is really good too. Here's the the HUD example and and this one failed miserably unfortunately. But you can see it was a Landry light pullback. So it pulled deep enough, pulled back deep enough. You see you had this tremendous run in here, 100%, 150% or whatever and then you had a fairly deep pullback. In this case all the way to the 30 EMA. So in this case that was deep enough. 
Now, Brian kind of insinuated like, well, sometimes they pull back deeply and they just don't work. Yeah, I know, shit happens. <laughs> no shit, right? Part of that is a function of the shitty market that we're in right now. Pardon my French. My little French friend used to say, but dude, that's not French. That sounds like English to me. Part of it is in the, mar the conditions that we're in. The conditions just are not really conducive to trading. And that's why I've been guilty of not doing a lot with the position trades. We, we had a few lately. We got one, I think we got uh, one out of three or something like that. One turn in the winter and we had a couple of losers, you know? So it's like, it sucks, but that's what it is. You got to chip away at it, chip away at it. And maybe, just maybe that one big winner is going to take care of those losers. We'll see. Now, he was asking about Verizon as a deep pullback. Well, the first thing I know, this is getting back to this kind of, got me thinking about the stock selection, like I said earlier. So before you, you're you looking at, is the pullback deep enough? Is the stock worth trading to begin with? Okay, so kind of back it up a little bit before you kind of get to the nitty gritty. In this case, the HV was 20, and that's even after all these gyrations in here. So I'd be willing to bet if I rewound it back to this day here, it probably was much, 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 much lower. Also a huge thick company a company like this would be good for opening gap reversals and uptrends or even downtrends but i would not rush out and, and and position trade this on the long side so much and sometimes by the way sometimes and i'm just kind of looking at it sometimes you could you could and i don't know what the rest of the chart looks like but let's say that you were trying to short it i would prefer shorting a big thick stock like this because you've got institutional support and it gets dumped over time and sometimes you can get some really nice downtrends that come out of these things especially in a popular stock anyway notice that the pullback yeah it was deep enough but it pulled back all the way to where it broke out from okay so that's that's of concern so the pullback is into the prior breakout level so that's too that's too deep to go after plus the hv is really really low on that one 